have a hostage situation. Take him out. You stop this train now. The train don't kill me. The people will. Tell me about it. So Liam Neeson is edited again in this action-packed thriller. But what did I think about it? Well, let's find out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for The Commuter. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, help your boy out by clicking that subscribe button. Also, click the little bell so you can be notified when I make uploads. And also, give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. So now, we have the latest movie with Liam Neeson called The Commuter. When I first saw the trailer, I was really looking forward to this because I really do enjoy all the movies that Liam Neeson is in. Even back in the Star Wars prequels, um, I did enjoy that. I enjoyed all of his movies. Um, this is being directed by Jean Collette Sarah and they have these two have been teaming up for like the past five or six films. And if you don't know who Jean Collette Sarah is, he's directed uh, movies like House of Wax which I really did love. Orphan was a really good movie. I enjoyed that. Unknown, Nonstop, Run All Night, and Run All Night had a comment in it, and that was a very surprise, because I, a, a real big surprise, because I remember the trailers for that didn't look that great, but when I did see it, I was pretty much blown away. And they also did The Shallows, which came out a few years ago. So you have a few films right there that Jean Collette has done, and I really do enjoy all of those films. Now, with this right here, if you've seen the trailers, or if you haven't seen the trailers, um, Liam Neeson is a character in this movie that is a family businessman. He is an insurance salesman and he is a commuter. Every day he does get on a train to commute back and forth to work. But this mysterious figure by the name of Joanna played by Vera Farminga and I love her as well. She has been working with Jean Collepsera as well too. She was with the mother in the orphan movie, what I, I just mentioned. And she gives him a proposition like, hey, you know, I just have this one little thing right here that, you know, a hypothetical question. There's somebody on this train that doesn't belong. All we want you to do or all I want you to do is point them out. If you could point them out, hey, there's $25,000 in this bathroom hidden away and if you complete it or whatever you get another seventy five thousand dollars a total of one hundred thousand dollars he's like you know what the hell what you talking about lady you just offering money to a stranger it's like oh you know and she he gives him the opportunity to take advantage of this and there's a reason why he would or wouldn't and you know that's where you have your story now starting off i really did enjoy the very beginning of the film the way it started off was great because it just reminded me of everyday life that me you and everybody else goes through we all have to wake up. We all have to hit that alarm clock. We're all, I mean, we all have to get out of the bed and go to the bathroom and take a shower and brush our teeth and get dressed and eat breakfast and sell hugs and kisses and goodbyes to all the people that we love and things like that. And they really did do a great job of humanizing Liam Neeson's character to someone that you can really relate to, especially when he's in peril and danger later on in this film. Something else that I liked about this film too is the editing. There was a few scenes showing him walking walking in the subway and like they were showing him walking slow but had everybody around him like going super duper fast but the shot on him was staying still while everything around him was changing you know at a very rapid pace and i just i don't know for some reason like i really did like that i'm just like i'm really feeling this movie here you know there was a great um opening credits and i'm not one to really love opening credits um but if the opening credits does give the film a purpose or whatever that just speaks to me and they did that great in this film as well and so you know jumping back over to where i did give this the plot the story the synopsis of the film this beginning of the film was a great setup and then the setup to where um Liam Neeson is on the train. I, I, I like that as well, too. Um, the very beginning, even before that, you know, I like how the film kind of just showed you how, you know, you can just be living your everyday life and how just something random can just, you know, crush your world and flip it upside down and just how you have to, you know, adapt at the last moment and things like that. I mean, there was so much to relate to his character. So they had a, a perfect setup for the film, perfect setup to his character and a perfect setup to uh, the plot of the 
movie to where, you know, he's on this train trying to pick out this person. But actually, when things start getting uh, down to it and nitty gritty, I, I started to be turned off a little bit. I started to become very, very frustrated. And Liam Neeson kind of was just making some dumb decisions to me. And I really didn't understand why. I was saying, oh, no, what's going on? Jean Collette Sierra, you usually put together such great things. Liam Neeson, you usually a rock star on all your films. Why are you doing this? I mean, you know the consequences of this decision, okay? You know this. I don't and I don't want to spoil it for you. They're in the trailer, but you may have forgotten and I don't want to spoil it to you, but you're like, okay, you know the, the the person or persons that is pulling the strings that is making you do this job. You know they're serious at this point, but you're still making these decisions that don't make any logical sense. Like, why would you do this or whatever? You know you're going to get in trouble. And on the flip side of that, I became frustrated because like they're they're able to see or they are able to see a one person is able to see Liam Neeson's every move on this train, but that's not fully explained or what I'm just like, okay, how in the world were they able to see that Liam Neeson was doing this? And I ha I didn't completely give up on the film. I, I was just kind of sitting there kind of just stoic just saying to myself, okay, I don't hate this film, but I'm not really liking it. Like, you know, as, as much as I want either, but I'm going to be patient. There's still room for this film to redeem itself. But fortunately the film does redeem itself. Uh, Another great thing about it is there are a number of uh, fight scenes on this train and a lot of hand to hand combat that was very intense and it was very well choreographed. And I loved all the camera work when they was doing this because it was all done with one shot or well, it wasn't done with one shot. You can tell that they use some type of computerized technique to seam it all to um, to blend it all together. And it wasn't jarring or anything like that. But if this was literally done in one take, it would be impossible. But I do like what they were able to do with the computer graphic imaging to where they tried to make it seem like one shot but it was really nice and it was very choreographed and it was very tough and intense um, it was also a little bit unrealistic as well because a, a number of characters just kept catching blows to the face and all parts of the body. And I was just kind of saying to myself, OK, why has this character gone down yet? They should be knocked out. You know, I was just kind of sitting some sitting there watching like, OK, you know, this is kind of getting ridiculous. They need to put like those power bars at the top of each character while they're fighting or whatever. And that's when we'll know when the character is about to go down, because this feels like a video game right here where, you know, people just keep getting knocked out over and over and over again and it's just like okay what's going on and there were there was this one character on the train that just knew how to fight randomly they tried to sell him that he was just a regular person and they did for the most part but then or whatever he's pulling all these nice kicks and moves and jabs and things like that okay like is this some type of mma kung fu ninja fighter over here i mean like it just the the chances of just a normal everyday person knowing how to fight this well would just kind of seem unrealistic to me. Was it nice to look at? Yes, it was very well choreographed. And I, I, I mean, I did enjoy it from that standpoint. But from a realistic standpoint, you know, I was just kind of like, okay, this is stupid. This is annoying. Um, and there were just too many unanswered questions as well. The plot and story just got really sloppy. It was too coincidental. I mean, people were ending up in places at just the right time that just didn't make any sense people are calling this phone and that phone and this device and that device and i'm just kind of sitting there like okay how is this possible this is un impossible and i just really don't like where this film is going and then like one of the last things is um if you've seen there, there was just one part of the the movie where i just kind of threw up my arms like, okay this is just effing retarded because I just felt that Liam Neeson should have died on this part, but no, he didn't die. He was just able to kind of escape from this one portion, you know, like by the hair on his chinny chin chin. And I was just like, okay, come on, guys, like don't insult my intelligence. And, you know, at that point, I was just kind of like, okay, this film is dumb. I don't like it. I'm going to give this a negative score. But the last 20 minutes or so, there was some redeeming qualities and it did bump the film back up to at least a passing grade or something. Um you know, just past the passing grade. And I also, I mean, you know, uh, it was kind of to the point to where like, you're screaming at the screen, like character, do this character, do that. But then, and then the, the character would do it or whatever. So I was happy or whatever. So I was like, okay, you know, they don't have a bunch of stupid characters. They're using their brains They're you know, everybody's working together, trying to figure out this puzzle or whatever, because it's a puzzle. You, it's a race against time. And like all of Neon, all of Liam Neeson's movies are a race against time. All of John Collette Sarah's movies are a race against time. And 
and this one is as well. But I, I didn't like this race uh, for the most part. The beginning was great. First third of the first act of the movie was fantastic. The second act of the movie was kind of, you know, in crumbs and shambles everywhere. But the third act of the film, or at least the second half of the third act, did come together to where, you know, I was like, okay, you know, this was a, a big kind of sloppy, silly mess, but I still enjoyed it. You know, they still kind of made up and tried to tie it together a lot of loose ends, and they did do that for the most part, but there were still some loose ends that kind of just raveled and escaped or whatever. And um, I may be the only one that feels this way because I was able to see this early at a screening, and when the mo when the credits came, there were everybody was clapping like, yeah, you know, I, you know, like they really did enjoy the film, and I was kind of shocked by that. So um, I didn't hate the film. I enjoyed it, but it could have been a lot better. Better. And out of all the films that Jean, Jean Colette Sarah did out of House of Wax, Orphan, Unknown, Nonstop, Run All Night, and The Shadows, uh, The Shallows, I like this one the least. If I had to rate the commuter out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it a 6.5 out of 10. Yes, a 6.5 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen The Commuter or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. Let me know in the comment section below why. Go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the bell so you can be notified. Also, go to my website. Check me out there, bookmark it. And also, look me up on social media, guys. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. And there's a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. And I just want to repeat that, guys. Please like my Facebook page. I would really appreciate it, and it would help me out a lot. But, guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of The Commuter, directed by Jean Collette Serra, starring Liam Neeson. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.